everyone. My name is Piotr Osuch. I'm from AGH University of Science and Technology from Krakow in Poland. And I am very grateful to all participants from around the world for joining my today's webinar. And please feel invited to discussion. I'll be happy to answer to your questions after my speech. What I'm going to discuss within the Copper Academy today is the processing of high conductivity materials. Of course, by saying high conductivity materials, I have copper on my mind and in a brief introduction, I'll try to put this obvious fact into broader perspective. As you can see on the slide, I've divided my presentation into seven sections, which are the main turning points of my speech. And I will address the following section titles as the presentation uh, goes by. OK, so moving on to the main topic, I would like to start with the very basics, namely periodic table of elements. There is 114 elements on the table, including 91 metals. The highest electrical conductivity among all the elements has the carbon in the form of graphene, with its conductivity reaching 100 megasiemens per meter, and silver, with its conductivity equal to 62.1 megasiemens per meter. The following elements with the highest electrical conductivity are the copper, 58.6 megasiemens per meter, gold, over 44 megasiemens per meter, and aluminum, over 60, 36 uh, megasiemens per meter. Uh, on the next slide, you can see the list of elements ranked by its electrical conductivity and also its price per ton. Although the graphene or even the silver are here ranked higher than copper, in fact, both of these materials are not widely used for electrical applications. In case of graphene, the technology is still under development and silver is used only in some advanced electrical applications, mainly because of its price and lower corrosion resistance. In addition to copper as a material which has a best compromise between electrical properties and price, only aluminum, mainly due to its lower specific weight, is used as an electrical conductor. It is used mostly in an overhead power lines where the light weight of aluminum is particularly desired. In most other kinds of applications where the high conductivity is the most important factor, the copper and its alloys are the materials of the first choice. Uh, with that said, I would like to move on to the following sections of the presentation, which concern the main part of my presentation's title, namely processing. Under the term processing, many people understand different things, different technological operations. But in this case, there is one thing that all the processes have in common. They are all designed in order to preserve the copper high electrical conductivity and relatively attractive price after particular processing operations. And from that point of view, the first crucial operation in processing of copper for high conductivity applications is the process of electrorefining, which results in the chemical purity of copper. So why is the copper purity so important? Well, it is the very basic issue, because more the impurities copper has, the lower its conductivity is. In other words, presence of the other elements in the primary copper suppress electrical properties of copper. On the slide, you can see well-known relation between content of particular elements in the pure copper and its electrical conductivity. In the real life, the impurities never occur separately, like on this academic chart. They always occur together in various combinations. And together, 
they may significantly influence the electrical properties of copper. So from the very first technological or rather metallurgical step where the copper ore turns into a copper cathode, which is of course the primary copper product, achieving high conductivity is the main priority. Particular operations of refining copper ore are designed in order to remove all chemical impurities. Starting with copper ore, which contains only about 2% of pure copper, in following operations, copper content in the melt is getting higher by removing impurities listed on the slide. First in the smelting technology and then by pyrometallurgical refining and finally by electro refining uh, uh, all the impurities are being removed. Today I'd like to draw your attention specifically to the electro refining process and its final product, uh, namely cathode, which is a commodity listed on London's metals exchange. Basically, there are two technologies for producing copper cathodes. In both of them, the process of copper electro refining consists of putting a copper anode, which is about 99.5 to 99.7% of pure copper. The, the copper anode obtained in pyrometallurgical refining process is is put in sulfuric acid together with a cathode and passing an elect uh, electrical current between the anode and cathode through an external circuit. At the applied electropotential, copper and less noble elements dissolve from the anode into the electrolyte. Under the influence of the applied electrical potential, Copper ions migrate from the electrolyte and deposit on the cathode, forming, forming the, the proper copper cathode. The main difference between conventional and modern technology is the material from which the cathode is made of. In the conventional technology, the starting material for cathode is the thin sheet of high purity copper, which becomes the core of the cathode, becomes a part of, of, of cathode in the process. In the modern technology, the starting material for the, for the cathode is made from stainless steel and the deposited cathode is stripped out from, from, from the stainless steel starter uh, by automated robot. Among many advantages of this approach, I'd like to focus your attention on the improved chemical purity of cathodes from the newer technology. As you can see in the table, all the cathodes from the newer and from the conventional technology are able to meet chemical purity requirements of the London's uh, metals exchange. But only in the conventional technology is this possible to achieve as pure quality cathodes as you can see in the lower part of the slide. Of course, these dendrites uh, are rich in all sorts of impurities, making these cathodes useless for further processing into, into products uh, uh, intended for electrical applications. These cathodes may be used for copper pipes, but their level of impurities eliminates them from high conductivity electrical applications. In conclusion, I'd like to emphasize the fact that for electrical applications, especially high conductivity ones, the choice of cathode as a feedstock for further processing has a fundamental meaning because, as I mentioned earlier, the chemical purity of primary copper is crucial for its electrical conductivity. Now let me draw your attention to the technological operations 
for turning the cathodes into more specific products intended for electrical applications. The cathodes uh, are usually transformed uh, into following semi-finished products. Copper wire rod, which is a product of continuous melting, casting, and uh, hot rolling process. And then uh, uh, copper wire continuously casted, oxygen-free copper alloy, alloy wire rod. Next, continuously casted copper or copper alloy strip. And direct chill casted copper or copper alloy billets. So first, let's have a look what are the final products and what are the possible technological routes of processing copper wire rod obtained from continuous melting and casting and rolling line. The diameter of wire rod is in most cases equal to 8 mm, which is a sort of standard, which allows easy processing of wire rod into wires with uh, smaller gouges in the process of drawing. The ready-made wires after drawing process are intended uh, for production of all sorts of wires, cables, transformers, or motor windings. Uh, there is also alternative technology for production of copper wire rod with 8 mm diameter, which is characterized by the fact that wire rod from the alternative, this alternative technology has, uh, has reduced oxygen content. This type of wire rod is also dedicated for drawing wires then they can be used in the same applications as the wires made from, let's say, conventional wire rod. But the oxygen-free copper has some advantages the wires from the traditional technology do not have. I will address that issue further too. The main applications of the oxygen-free copper are audio-video cables and the fire-resistant cables. The same technologies for the oxygen-free wire rod can also be used for producing a low alloy copper wire rod with diameters up to 25 millimeters, which in the next technological step are intended for drawing of sectional wires which are used in the trolley lines. Another application of alloy wire rods obtained by continuous casting process are forgings intended for various types of connectors, mainly for trolley wires. In this case, the continuously casted rod is being cut and then is used as a feedstock for, for, for hot forging process. Another semi-finished product which is produced are the casted or casted and rolled strips. They are intended for a rolling process in order to obtain thin sheet or even foils, which in the next technological step are subjected to cutting, uh, uh, stamping, or, and as a result, uh, we get ready-made electrical connectors. For this application, mostly copper alloys are used. And the last semi-finished product uh, which I'd like to discuss today are, are the direct chill casting copper and copper alloys billets. Billets are intended for extrusion, extrusion process. The extruded bar can be subjected to different following technological steps like drawing, uh, which you can see on the, the slide, or forging, as you can see on the next one. For some forged connector, some forged connector can be made from extruded profiles. So, as you can see, there are at least four main technologies for processing copper cathodes. This graph shows what is the share of part 
particular semi-finished products in all copper electrical applications. You can clearly see that the most copper cathodes intended for electrical applications are processed mainly in the form of round-shaped wire rods. Uh, that's why the next part of my today's speech concerns comparison between two most important processing technologies for producing the wire rods. As I mentioned earlier, the main difference between these two types of wire rods is the lack of oxygen in the one of them. It leads us to a question whether this is the only difference between these two materials? Of course not. Since the idea behind the processing technologies are significantly different. On the left part of the slide, you can see the microstructure of ETP wire rod obtained by continuous melting, casting, and hot rolling process. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that the grains in such copper are very small and as a, re as a result of dynamic recrystallization during hot rolling process. In the right part of the slide, you can see the microstructure of, of a cross section of oxygen free copper wire rod obtained by an upward continuous casting process. Please note that the grains in the, in the oxygen free copper are much larger and look typical as for the cast material. Since in this technology material is not subjected to the road processing. So let's have a closer look on a technology of continuous melting, casting, and hot rolling process. The process begins uh, with melting the high purity cathodes in the melting furnace. The next important segment of this technology is the casting machine, where the molten copper, copper is crystallized into the form of continuously casted bar. The cross section of the bar is about 72 hundredths of square millimeters. The bar is then transported into the integrated multi stance rolling mill, where the reduction of the cross section of the bar is taking place. As you can see in the lower part of the slide, within the 16 rolling stands, the cross section of the bar is being shaped into the round one and the diameter, the gauge, is uh, reduced down to 8 mm. Wire rod is then packed into the 5 ton coils. On the following pictures, you can see the microstructure of the bar and wire rod in increasing magnification. Please note that the grain structure of the bar is very similar to the oxygen free copper wire rod from continuous casting technology. But when we look closer, we can see the oxygen in this type of copper, which creates copper oxides. Uh, the copper oxides are influencing the processing performance of such wire rod. Other words, this type of wire rod is hard to be processed into very thin wires in the range uh, lower than, let's say, 100 micrometers, since the size of copper oxides in the microstructure of such, such wire rod can reach even 10 micrometers, like on the picture you see. In the alternative technology, uh, the alternative technology was designed in a manner which allows reduction of oxygen content down to 2 to 3 ppm, parts per million. It was achieved mainly due to the fact that in this process, molten copper is covered by some types of, of carbon flakes, which are the sufficient barrier between the atmospheric oxygen 
Moreover, it can continuously reduce the oxygen content in the melt. On the slide, you can see uh, the technology scheme. It starts from the melting of high-purity copper cathode, and in the next main step, molten metal is crystallized in the casting machine to desired gauge. In the lower right part of the slide, you can see cross, section, cross sections of, of continuously casted wire rods with different, uh, different diameters, different gauges. The smaller ones are intended for drawing wires, and the larger ones are mainly uh, intended for drawing trolley wires or forging uh, some connectors or, or clamps. Within the continuous casting technology, there is interesting issue with the number of, of grains in the wires, wire rod cross-section, which decreases along with decreases, decreasing casting speed. The grain boundaries are the preferred spots for conduction electron scattering. Therefore, we observe the increasing of electrical conductivity along with decreasing of the casting speed. And, of course, very important advantage of this technology is the almost complete reduction in, the, in oxygen content, which you can see at the picture on the right side of the slide. The production technology also influences some mechanical properties and technological performance, which I will address further. Now I'd like to invite you to revision of basic road processes, which are used in processes, processing of uh, already discussed semi-finished high conductivity products. Basically, there is five uh, road processes which are listed on the slide. Some of them are carried out in the high temperature and some of them are carried out in the ambient temperature. For electrical applications, uh, the drawing process is the more, most important uh, route process. Since the production volume of copper wire rods is significantly higher than other semi-finished products. So the main purpose of drawing process is to reduce diameter of copper wire rod to desired wire diameter geometry. Uh, it is the only process where the force is put into the ready-made product and the basic tool for drawing uh, are the dies. As I mentioned earlier, the feedstock for drawing process is the wire rod, mostly with 8 mm diameter, and the ready-made product is the wire. On the following pictures, you can see some industrial drawing machines for wire rod and also for smaller diameters. Going back to the comparison between conventional and oxygen-free copper wire rod, in the wires made from oxygen-free copper uh, are characterized by better electrical properties in terms not only of the electrical conductivity, but also in terms of such parameter, parameters like signal scattering or propagation speed at high electrical frequencies which was reflected in measurements of such factors. Uh, the wires drawn from oxygen-free uh, uh, copper are characterized by lower noise level, lower signal scattering, and the higher signal propagation speed. These results uh, gave a rise to, to the replacing of wires made from conventional copper to our oxygen-free ones in the UTP type uh, cable. It allowed the producer to downsize the wire gauge, making benefits 
uh, in its production costs. Uh, the next road process concerns rolling of casted strip. In the process, we obtain the tin sheet or foil, which for electrical application uh, is used for producing various types of connectors. On the pictures, you can see some industrial equipment intended for rolling sheets. Next route process is the extrusion process. The feedstock for extrusion are the direct chill casting billets, which during process can be transformed uh, into various types of profiles. On the slide, you can see some industrial presses for, for the extrusion process. The specific type of extrusion, uh, it is worth to mention, uh, are the processes of continuous extrusion, uh, such as conform technology. Since the continuous processes are better, more stable, and uh, moreover cheaper than discontinuous ones, this technology becomes more common. The main advantages of this technology is the fact that wastes of wires can be can be used as a feedstock for this process. And this is, of course, very beneficial, especially for, for cable companies. Uh, next basic process uh, is the sheet metal forming process. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, one of the road processes for electrical applications, which uses as a feedstock a semi-finished product from other processes. Uh, name, namely uh, sheet from the rolling process. Uh, sheet metal forming process is a part of the technology for producing electrical uh, connectors. Uh, uh, metal forming uh, is, uh, uh, is the process of placing a flat sheet metal in either blank or coil form into a stamping press where a tool and die surf surface forms the metal into a net shape. On the pictures, you can see some, uh, some industrial uh, metal forming lines. And the last one, heavy duty process, is uh, hot forging. A feedstock for, for forging can be obtained by casting or by extrusion. The feedstock is being placed in the lower die and the press putting, putting down the upper die, closing the mold and changing shape of the feedstock. On the pictures, you can see examples of some industrial uh, forging presses. From all mentioned route processes and issues connected with processing of high conductivity materials, now I'd like to draw your attention to couple critical factors which are crucial for electrical applications. The first issue is the purity of copper cathode. Since the electrical properties are strongly affected by the level of impurities, high conductivity products should be, produ should be produced from, from the highest purity cathodes. Please note that at the London Metals Exchange, there is over 70 grades of cathodes classified. The next critical factor for producing high conductivity materials is its microstructure, which is inevitably connected with the processing technology. Very often, it is reflected not only in the properties of the final product, but as you can see at, at, the, at the slide, also in the processing performance. As an example, the lack of oxygen in the, in the oxygen-free copper wire rod and the different uh, grain structure of, uh, of such material. Uh, these facts forced uh, wires producer to rising the temperature of dynamic recrystallization in the drawing line 
in, so, uh, and the next uh, important factor I'd like to mention are the production costs. Historically, the price of copper is uh, relatively high nowadays. The, therefore, it is necessary to keep copper processing costs uh, uh, tight. Example of succeeded cost reduction, uh, uh, which is showed in, in, the, in the slide, uh, is the replacing uh, of extruded profiles by continuously casted ones. Uh, uh, as a feedstock for forging clamps intended for railway application. To sum, to sum up, I move uh, to conclusions. Since uh, chemical purity of copper is crucial for electrical conductivity, all technological steps involving metallurgical processes should contribute in self to achieving higher purity of copper product. Especially in the case of conventional electro-refining technology, qualitative selection of cathode, cathodes is necessary. It has been proven that the microstructure, along with chemical purity, is one of the factors influencing copper's electrical properties, such as conductivity, reflection losses, signal propagation rate, Therefore, it is recommended to adjust the processing route for a specific application. Optimization of technological route can be beneficial for production costs of final product. Examples, replacing extruded profiles by continuous casted ones as a feedstock for forging clamps and connectors for railway traction, better electrical properties of oxygen-free copper wires allow for thinning the wires within a UTP-type cable. Thank you for your attention.